Well, it's moving day for the first time in <laughs> in a month. <laughs> I'm laughing because of this. <laughs> well, we got a little pineapple over here. Pineapple down there. Pineapple over here. <laughs> I know exactly who did this too. <laughs> Oh yeah, they're everywhere. Look at this. Oh my gosh. There's a little bit over a little bit overboard here. <laughs> yeah, this is definitely Joel and Tanya. Uh, I was wondering why they were asking what time we were gonna leave today. So just add a little time to our our teardown procedures today. <laughs> Oh, man, I don't know when the next time we're going to see them is, but uh, it's going down for sure. Anyway, like I was saying, today is the first day that we're traveling for a month, so it's hard to get back into, into procedure and back into what you're doing and hard to do it all without screwing up. Did you see what Joel and Tanya did? I, I did see around the door and on the side. That's a huge pineapple. It's always weird to get back into routine. Yeah. And today we're going to Patrick Space Force Base. And it's the first time we've ever gone to one that is a first come first serve. Yeah. So it's a little iffy. I called them yesterday. They had seven spaces available. And more were co coming available. She yeah, but we don't know who showed up yesterday. We don't know who showed up either. And we don't know who's showing up today. So we gotta hurry up, pack up our stuff, and nope. get out of here so we can beat <laughs> others. Because if we don't get there in time, and they're full, we have to dry camp until they get a space. Well, I just got done collecting all of the pineapples off the rig. They were excessive this time. Can't even see Leslie anymore. <laughs> <laughs> There's the culprits right there. <laughs> we did nothing. I did nothing, nothing at all. Came to collect your no, no, nope. inflatable you. pineapple. All for you. <laughs> it was a wad, man. I picked it up. Hey, you couldn't even see Leslie's head. <laughs> There's so many little pineapples. <laughs> Night. Very stealthy. Ooh, didn't yeah. hear you. Maybe oh. we were doing laundry. No, you yeah. were, we heard you walking around. Oh, don't worry. We were just like probably getting ready for bed. Yes. Yeah. You hear the t like hear the TV or something. I was like, oh my goodness, be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. I had to take them off before uh, too many people saw. <laughs> Despite that, I'm still gonna wish you a happy birthday. Aww, thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's Tanya's birthday today, so happy you're birthday. You're welcome. Thank yeah. you. Here, you can have the box. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think. You can raffle that off to somebody. Awesome, thank you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Leslie's trying to deflate the pineapple. Yeah. Looks like she's humping it. You're going to give people the wrong idea. This is the fastest way to deflate it. You got to hump the pineapple. Just sit on it. <laughs> you got to put your weight into it. All right, well, if there were any doubts for the neighbors, there aren't any more. <laughs> We are not swingers, by the way. <laughs> Disclaimer. It's just for fun. Don't call us. No messages. <laughs> oh, we got a slight issue. Yeah. I'm not sure how. I don't either. Let's go check it out. I can't figure it out. I don't know what's going on. So. I think I know what happened. Okay. Yeah. I'm kind of like a detective. Kind of not. Well, we came in and that was there. I see that, all those little shards of glass all over the island. There's glass down here, there's glass in the seat, there's glass down here, and then there is the culprit. And oh, there's a Skittle or something down here, too. <laughs> That's from you. That's an orange Skittle. You're um, a Skittle eater. I was originally thinking that the bulb just broke because it was shaking around but all the threads are still attached and everything. So what that tells me is it unscrewed itself, completely unscrewed itself. Yeah, I mean, I see the dome got yeah. loose. So yeah, the, the thing that screws the dome in yeah. needs to be tightened. I should have yeah, it is. That. It is a little sideways. I don't know if you can tell in there. It's a little, so, it's a little kick, it's, it's a little canted. Down. It's supposed to be more up in there. In the so by that coming loose, it caused the whole light bulb to completely unscrew itself. It and fall down so another thing that's going to be added to the checklist tighten your light bulbs how'd the glass clean up go good good yeah um i want a corded vacuum 
Okay. So we need to go get a corded vacuum. And we have the battery operated one now and it dies. Yeah, so if, if I don't charge it after every use, just because I don't know how long I'm going to have to run it, like that was expensive because I had to make sure I got up all the glass. But as the battery's not so strong, it's not sucking up glass. So I thought cordless would be better. It's not. No. So I want a corded one again. All right. Oh, I got your new vacuum. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what'd you get? I got a rocket. Sounds fast. Doesn't it? <laughs> it's gonna take off. And she can't wait to try it. No, you gotta try it out. I gotta make sure it sucks. So. What ready? sucks is we had to buy a new vacuum. That's yeah, what sucks. I'm sorry. But. At least we'll be able to get up with all the little shards. I feel confident the glass is, is up for Scout. So. Yeah. Um, Leslie uses a vacuum like three to four times a day. Two to three. Most people do two to three times a week, <laughs> if that. So, Leslie had about 100,000 miles on the last vacuum cleaner and then yeah. wondered why it died. <laughs> And it's hard to put 100,000 miles on a vacuum cleaner in an RV. But Leslie can, can do it. I can do it. I mean, if one speck of dust gets off of the mat, we're breaking out the vacuum, dude. No, not one. You tracking a lot of crap. I'm always cleaning up after you. Don't put that evil on me, Ricky Bobby. It, it's you. Your shoes trap, and it, you track it everywhere. And then we're at campgrounds. There's gravel. If Scout eats the gravel, he'll die. So, yeah. I can't let them die. Got a vacuum. Crank it up. A clean house is a happy house. Whatever. So. <laughs> Just crank it up. <laughs> Fancy. It's got headlight and everything. Yeah. <laughs> you can vacuum in the dark. <laughs> yeah. Let me show you where we're at real quick. This is Patrick Space Force Base. Used to be Patrick Air Force Base. Space Force Base now. They got us packed in here pretty tight we do have a little pull through it's a small pull through though so we had to they are trucking here all janky pretty tight up to this travel trailer and up to this fifth wheel uh, but it is a nice park uh, for the most part you can see back here out the back of our rv we have our own little concrete pad here and this is like used to be paved but it's like old paved and so now it's kind of more like gravel than paved but i don't know if you can see way over there that's the that's the ocean right there. So we're right on the Space Coast of Florida and it is hot today, man. It's like 80, 82 degrees today. And, uh, but it's beautiful, beautiful day out here. Luckily though, we're on 50 amp service, full hookups. So we can run all three ACs if we need to. Now this is a first come first serve place. And that's the reason that we've never been here before because we have never had the confidence to do a first come first serve because if we don't get a space then we have to dry camp until a space becomes available but now because we have our big beard batteries we have the confidence to just show up and if they don't have a space then we can dry camp for a day or two or however long it takes to get a spot and we'll be fine so without the big beard battery setup we would never have been able to stay here at space coast and um we got some new stuff that I want to show you real fast. We got some new stuff from Blue Technology. We have the water pressure regulator, we have the three-way connector, and we have the 90 degree connector. They are all stainless steel. Let me show you what they look like out of the box. Here's what they look like out of the box. There is our new water pressure regulator. It already has the quick disconnect already set up on there. And then there's the three-way valve, and it already has a quick disconnect that goes with it. And then there's the 90 degree adapter and it has a quick disconnect adapter that comes with it also. Let me get these installed and I'll show you exactly how we're going to set it up and why we got these. Um, this is our new setup at the spigot and this is a three-way connector. It's all stainless steel and these things pivot. So these things will actually move out of the way of each other. And so even if you get those water hookups that are like way like down in the ground, these things will kick up too out of the ground. So you don't have to worry about going way down to the ground, trying to get your stuff connected. You get this thing on the spigot, you're good, it'll move out of the way. So what we have here is on this one, 
I have my water pressure regulator. This is the old one right here. You can see the difference there between the stainless steel and the old one. This one's all busted and rusted and, and it was working, but it was just, uh, it was old and busted. And it didn't have the quick disconnect. The Blue Tech has quick disconnects on all of this stuff. So this stuff will just come right off and pop right back on. This one is for the water that Leslie uses to collect to go into our coffee maker because you don't want to have softened water going into your coffee maker. It'll mess it up. This one here is for a black tank flush. I have a separate hose for that and all I gotta do is move this one out of the way. Pop that one on there with the quick disconnect and then hook it into my flush on the RV. And so I got my water for Leslie, I got my black tank flush, and then I got the water that's going into the coach. This three-way connector replaced this, which only had two, and they weren't maneuverable, and again, it's all old and busted and rusted and didn't have the quick disconnects on it. So all this cool stainless steel stuff is working really, really great, and it all looks clean and it all matches. And then we have our stainless steel braided water hoses that goes into our filtration system, the three-stage 0.2 micron filtration system from, our, from Blue Tech. And then um, all stainless steel braided hoses goes into the water softener and then the water softener up here. And this is the last thing that we just got from Blue Tech. This is the 90 degree adapter and it has a quick disconnect here, a quick disconnect here. So that'll pop off as you need it. And this, is the, this is the old one and uh, I didn't use it. So it still looks new because uh, we just didn't use it. Uh, but that is the copper versus the stainless steel. I don't want to bore you to death on why we have a water filtration system and why we went with Blue Tech, but uh, I will tell you a couple things that we researched and we didn't know until we found out, and that's one of the reasons that we got a water filtration system and one of the reasons that we went with Blue Tech. Um, the EPA is only required to test water from the source, which means the water treatment plant or the reservoirs, it is not required to test once it goes into the system. So it goes into pipes and plumbing that is not tested. No one is doing any regulatory guidelines on that stuff. So everything in a campground, all the piping and plumbing that they have there, whatever sediments or impurities are in there, they're in there and the water was tested at the source, it's fine. But from the source to you, you have no idea what that water's going through or what kind of sediments that it's picking up or what kind of impurities that it's going into your camper. So we made sure that none of that stuff's gonna be able to get to us. The 0.2 micron filtration system is gonna filter out like even down to like red blood cell size pieces of sediment. So it's really gonna clean your water and then you have the water softener, which is gonna make your water soft. Some campgrounds are not on city water. So they don't come from a reservoir or they don't go through a water treatment facility. They're on wells. And that can actually be a little more scary than city water because the only requirement is that the owner of the campground bring in a sample of their water to the EPA to be tested every so often. And who's to say what they're bringing? Is it even water from their well? Or are they chlorinating the hell out of it just to pass the EPA's test? So you really don't know what's in the water no matter what campground you stay at so here's the bottom line is all this stuff necessary no i'd say the filtration system is absolutely necessary all the other stuff is really really nice to have all the stainless steel fixtures all the quick disconnects the water softener for us was a must because just the spots and the hard water we want it to be soft and feel better on our skin and not leave spots all over our stuff so at least at a minimum i would recommend getting the water filtration system but if you want it to all look pretty and have all the luxuries of everything then just you know bite the bullet get it all you can get all in one package deal over on the blue tech website we'll leave a link down in the description to go over there and if you decide to make the investment we can save you a little bit of money because it is spendy and you will need to save a little bit of money we'll help you do that spacex is messing with my motions <laughs> taking me off yeah I was got delayed on the sc scrubbed on the first day scrubbed, scrubbed on, on the, the second, second day. day delayed 
Because it was supposed to be 6.39 p.m. Yeah. Then they got moved to... 7.57. 7.57, and now it's 8.21. Yeah. So we're going to have a night launch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we like Hopefully night it'll show up on the camera. Uh. <laughs> I got the long lens on, and hopefully I'll be able to see something from here. Yeah. Uh, if they push it again, I swear to God. What are you going to do? I'm going to write NASA a very... Well, it's not NASA. SpaceX. No, SpaceX. A sternly, sternly worded, worded letter. letter. <laughs> Yay. The launch happened. Finally. Finally happened. <laughs> we went up on the roof. Yeah. And got to see it. That was the mm -hmm. closest that I've ever been to a launch. Yeah. At right. first, it just looked like a glowing ball of fire. Yeah. It just lit up. Coming up from behind the, the trees. trees. But as soon as yeah. the, it ignited, you see the, the glow start behind the trees. And you're like, okay, here we go. <laughs> and then um, it goes up above that. Yeah. You really couldn't see anything very defined until it went to, um, I think it was the second burner. Yeah. Once it was not going up, it was going out and over. Yeah. And then you could see the tail. Tail. Playing. Yeah, that's when it got prettier. And then the tail got blue. Yeah. And long. Yeah. And so it was burning hot. Yeah. And that joker was cooking. Yeah. I don't know how fast it was going. We were... it, it's, it's Starlink launch, so it's... Yeah. A very skinny rocket. It is. It wasn't like a shuttle. So. Yeah, the shuttles are way bigger. You'd probably be able to see, see them a, a lot better. More defined. Yeah. yeah. But that little rocket. Putting off a hell of a flame. How yeah. much fuel did they say? One million pounds, pounds of fuel on that little rocket. That's a lot. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, we were able to see um, the booster. Once yeah, the... once it separated. <laughs> once the booster like, separated. Like, I was like blowing out a candle. Yeah, like, whoosh, gone. <laughs> It's still pretty, though. It was really cool, and um, the camera really doesn't do it justice. Seeing it in person no. was really cool. Yeah. Because you could actually see the flames pretty well. To the For the naked, naked eye, eye, you could see the flames really well, yeah. but on the camera, you really couldn't see it that well. But yeah. it was still really cool to it see was. in person, and always fun to see a launch. Anyway, we're headed to South Carolina tomorrow. Yes. And mm -hmm. making our long trek up to Indiana. Yep. Going so. the long out and about route. Yeah, here we go. Yeah. Ready or not. Buckle up. Hey, stick around for a few seconds. We're going to honor a fallen hero. Mm -hmm. If you want to get involved with helping us help veterans while we're out on the road, everything you need to know is right down in the description of the video. Appreciate you watching. See you in South Carolina. <laughs> Bye.